Everyone has a story. Stories have power. They help us understand. Jessup's Journal is a collection of powerful, positive, and inspirational stories. It's time for Jessup's Journal. Hi, I'm Doug Jessup. Welcome to this episode of Jessup's Journal, where we share powerful, positive, and inspirational stories and music. I love the process of combining colors onto a canvas to make a beautiful image. Today, we're visiting with artists. Our first artist creates magic through motion in water. I said to myself, I said, yes, that's what I am. I'm an artist. Today's musical guest, Jay Warren, reminds us that relationships go at all kinds of different speeds with his song, We Can Go Slow. We can go slow, 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 go slow. Susie Jarvis has an inspirational story of capturing moments in time through her art. I like it simple and clean. Objects with stories are treasures remembered, and sometimes artists, they leave beautiful treasures. So we visit with, well, not the artist, but her work. This is the Corpus Delecti, the actual person named Bonneville. But first, Al Rounds. Al, it's time to sign into Jessup's journal. With me today, Mr. Al Rounds. Al, thank you so much for coming. You're very welcome. Or actually, I guess I should say I came to you. You know, this is a beautiful studio. Thank you very much. You had an interesting little experience in third grade. Third grade. Yes. I went uh, to back to school night with my mom and dad. And as we went walking in the room, there was a girl standing by the door. And she said to her, her mother, look, mom, there's the artist in our class. And then I heard that, that went deep into me, and I said to myself, I said, yes, that's what I am, I'm an artist. There's a painting upstairs that is above your fireplace, that is in a meadow, and there's a young man. What's the story behind that painting? That painting is an interesting story. I, uh, it started when uh, President Nelson said, in conference when he was announcing about the 200 year celebration, he said, go home and figure out what you need to do to prepare for that conference. And then um, I turned to Cynthia and I said, there are two paintings I needed to do, have wanted to do for a long time on the Sacred Grove. And I told her that I needed to get that painting done. And uh, so I started meeting with the church historian, uh, Don Anders, and I got, you know, spend a lot of time preparing, getting ready for that. And then COVID hit and I couldn't go. And, uh, but I was so disappointed because I had worked so hard getting ready to do a painting. But last July, so a year ago from this month, I had a dream and the dream was very clear and really interesting. I, there was no sound. But I could see this uh, young man standing on a grassy knoll. I was able to look at his clothes really closely. I could see he had on uh, pants that were too big for him. They were uh, coarsely made. I, he had a shirt that was way too large. I mean, they were both kind of drowning him. He had a blanket over his shoulders and a big floppy hat. Doug, you would have loved his hat. Gotta love hats. All okay. messed up. Yeah. and crunched up and everything. And I knew it was Joseph Smith when he was 14 and he was on his way to the grove. And, and then my dream ended and I woke, woke up and I told Cynthia about it. And um, so I can't paint from my head. I have to go someplace and research, I have to research a painting but I have to go to the place. It's really important for me to kind of touch and feel the landscape or whatever I'm painting. Um, say if I'm doing a historical painting and then there's buildings in it that are not there. I build little models to um, help me visualize because I can't paint. I can see it in my head. It's like if I say to you, uh, draw me a horse and you can see a horse in your mind, and so can I, but I can't draw from that. 
I have Neither to, can I. <laughs> that's just because I don't know how to do it. <laughs> that's frustrating to me as an artist, but I go find a horse and I can draw it. You know, if I can look at something, I can draw it. So I used my grandson. I rented clothes from This Is A Place Monument and dressed him up like I saw in my dream and uh, or similarly to my dream and uh, I posed him out in the field he was a good sport because you know 14 year olds and he's 14 they stand a certain way it's not <laughs> not a man with his shoulders back you yeah, know well they kind of slouch a bit well I will say just so you know that the hat that that he's wearing is also called a slouch just Oh, really? I'm not sure if that's coincidental, <laughs> but just say it. Just a little heavy on <laughs> Yeah, well, you know. Anyway. So anyway, uh, I worked through a real long, tedious process of trying to get it not to look like Isaiah, the, my model, but what was in my mind from the dream. Oh. And I, I spent months trying to get that face right because I thought that was pretty important. So... Um, the painting is of Joseph on his way to the grove. And he stopped and he's just thinking. Don't know what he was thinking, but... Uh, so that was that's the painting that's upstairs. Okay. Now, this is a sketch of something that's got a whole bunch of notes on it. What's, what's the deal here? A commissioned painting and up in Lewiston, Utah, mm -hmm. by a young lady and she wanted me to do a painting of her grandfather's home up in Lewiston because the farm was being sold and she wanted to preserve the memories that she had of going up there and 4th of July and all the holidays would be up at grandpa's house on the farm in Lewiston. So I went through all these small little sketches I actually are trying to pick their brain of what l looks good to them because um, everybody's different and they see things differently. And um, finally I came across one that she said, oh, I like that one, but I don't like this half of it. And so I scaled it down and this is what I came out with as, in terms of composition for the painting. Okay. And, uh, and then all the notes up there, she, I mean, this uh, home was very endearing to her. and. I just felt like it was really important that I remember the things that were important to her. It's not like I want to include every single thing on a painting, but it's much like uh, I try to paint the familiarness of a site. You know, I try to uh, I try to capture the spirit of of what I paint. I want you to be the to come in and walk into it and have. A relationship with what I'm painting. So if a person has uh, a lot of things that are very important to them, then I try to find a way to put it in a painting that's still a good painting, a beautiful painting, but uh, will also be reminders of uh, what's important to them. So that's what I wrote all those things up so yeah. I could keep remembering them. You'd be surprised how you you get so focused in on a painting, trying to figure out how to paint it, you know, the, the technical, technical part of it, mm -hmm. you forget everything. I mean, you forget appointments and everything. <laughs> it's just like everything disappears, right? I understand that you have your garden for a particular reason. Yeah, I do. I use my garden and my paintings. I plant it in such a way that, uh, you know, after all these years, I know certain things, I've got a picket fence with things growing through them or something, so I kind of plant my garden with those things in mind so that I can use my flowers if I need them in a painting. I actually got that from being in England and going through all the gardens there, but when we visited uh, Beatrix Potter's home and I saw what she, you know, the grounds, of her home, the home itself, it's neat to us because it's mm -hmm. an old stone uh, British home, but uh, it's not a, you know, architecturally it's not in beautiful, interesting, but the gardens make it very beautiful. Oh yeah. And so that really had a profound effect on me when I was walking through there and I thought, I've got to do this in my yard. I'm just going to switch gears on you a little bit and I noticed that 
you're wearing something special on your yeah. your, your hand. Yeah, that's uh, my daughter Megan uh, passed away from a rare uh, form of bone cancer, and uh, she was uh, 37 at the time when she died. But her motto was uh, "Be mighty." She was not interested in us or writing things like Megan is fighting cancer and she's a great fighter and stuff like that. She just wanted us all to stay mighty in the things that we think about. And she was that way right to the end. But right before she passed away, she gave us all these bracelets and uh, just really moments before she, uh, you know, a day or two before she passed away, uh, she said to me, Dad, don't take that off. And so I haven't. And I, I got a couple of extras in, upstairs that I keep uh, in, a, in a Megan jar, you know, and uh, so that uh, I keep it with me always. She was the only one of my daughters that could keep the rule. I, so I have seven children, six girls, and uh, Megan was the only one that could come in my studio and not talk. <laughs> You know, that was the rule. You can come out and see me any time, but you can't talk. And I have a, a boatload of girls that love to talk. And Megan was the only one that could come out there and sit out there and read a book or just sit out there and not say much. One of my favorite inspirational quotes is from Audrey Hepburn. She said, to plant a garden is to believe in tomorrow. Today we're visiting with all kinds of artists. It's time for a musical artist. It's time for Jessup's Jukebox. With me today, Jay Warren and Nate Wade. Relationships have, I'd call a pace, if you will. Sometimes you want to go fast, but sometimes you just want to go slow. Summertime anthem, come in and your girlfriend's told you. You should take some time, get to know me. Take some time, get to know me. Young gun from the east side, put my best foot forward. Tell your boyfriend I'm taking over. Boyfriend, I'm taking over. Taking my time on the first day. I know that you won't make it easy. Tell me you want it, tell me you need it, tell me you saw it, tell me you feel it. Know what you want in the worst way. Turn to me, oh, you can't hurt me. Tell me you want it, tell me you need it, tell me it's alright how I see it. I see me, I see you. I know one thing we could do. We can go slow, 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 slow. I see me, I see you. I know one thing we could do. Slow, 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 if I really want you, I'm gonna take my time I don't mind if we take it slow Can't be too forward If I really want you, I'm gonna make you mine Taking my time on the first day I know that you won't make it easy Tell me you want it, tell me you need it Tell me it's alright, tell me you feel it Know what you want in the worst way Telling me all you can hurt me Tell me you want it, tell me you need it Tell me it's alright how I see it I see me, I see you I know one thing we could do We can go slow, 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 slow I see me, I see you I know one thing we could do We can go slow, 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 slow From left to right go slow One of my favorite things about custom hats is that I get to design them. 
he could say I'm the boss. That's why this hat's called El Jefe. I like to paint pictures in people's minds with words. Well, Susie Jarvis, she takes emotions and puts them on canvas. It's time to sign into Jessup's journal. Thank you, I'd love to. Oh, you got the pen and everything. With me today, renowned artist Susan N. Jarvis but she wants me to call her Susie, so we'll, we'll go with that. So Susie, great to see you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much for coming on. I met you because you are an incredible artist, and I've been interviewing a bunch of artists, and I kind of have this little phrase that it's kind of like Small Lake City, and you happen to know some people that I know, okay? So number one, I gotta give a shout out. Back in college, up at Utah State University, I roomed with a bunch of artists and there was this one guy by the name of Andre Pettengill. So, you know Andre. Andre is a wonderful artist. He, um, his landscapes are beautiful. He's, he's looser than I am and a bit more contemporary, but he's also a wonderful person and a very hard worker. Oh yeah, and mm -hmm. he likes his kitties, Kiki, Kiki. Okay, that, was that, <laughs> that was the cat at our, at, our, uh, at our place. But there was another artist that I just interviewed by the name of Al Rounds. Mm. Okay, let me guess, you know him too? I do, Al is very sensitive, wonderful, genuine person. His art is refined and beautiful, and uh, I really like Al, and oh. he's just a sweetheart. Okay, now I'm gonna see if we can get a trifecta. Okay, the other artist that I interviewed is a gentleman by the name of Greg Newbold. Okay, he's the guy that does my charcoal art and all that stuff that you see at the beginning of this series and everything. Do you by chance know Greg? I do know Greg, and I <laughs> admire his work. <laughs> of course you do, right? <laughs> well, not as well as the other two, but uh, Greg's work is, is so unique to him, and he has a style, and it's warm, and wonderful, and it's good to have fellow artists. There was an experience with your dad. Tell us about that. Just before I started at the University of Utah, my dad asked me what I was going to major in. And he said, why don't you decide and tell me at breakfast? Okay. So I come into the kitchen, mother's flipping pancakes, dad's at the table reading the paper. And he said, did you decide? And I said, I did. And he said, what's it gonna be? And I said, I'm going to be an artist. How'd that go over? <laughs> well, my dad, and he's quiet, he set the paper down and stood up, took out his wallet and started throwing money on the floor saying, you might as well throw your money away. <laughs> you could be a secretary or a teacher or a nurse. And I just held really still. My eyes were brimming with tears, but nothing spilled out. I just was quiet. And in that moment, I had to be an artist and I couldn't even consider those other things and that was the epiphany for me. So. And later, of course, he appreciated my efforts, he respected me as I became a successful artist. So what's a successful artist to you? How do you define that? <laughs> there are two gauges I use. One is the economic success where you don't have to supplement, you know, with a day job. If you can make it work for you, you are a successful business person. The other is following your heart and seeing the, the rewards that come from being intrinsically who you are. So what kind of art do you do? When I interviewed Al, he started Al. with oil, okay, and then he's realizing, for him at least, that it, watercolor was really where he, he wanted to be. When my mother was a painter, when she was younger, she used to use the palette knife, loved the palette mm. knife, okay? So what's your preferred, for lack of a better term, method of, or style of painting? I do illustrated journaling in watercolor when I travel because it's easy 
and it, I can still create. I have tried acrylics and they're okay. Oil paint to me, sorry Al, <laughs> is the creme de la creme. Uh -huh. It's so smooth and buttery and you can blend and you can scrape it off and come back the next day and still manipulate it. Um, it's my favorite. I am a traditional painter, meaning it's very academic, you know, I am a realist. Mm -hmm. However, I'm a contemporary realist because of the shape of my work. The palette, meaning the colors I use, they're light backgrounds generally, not like Rembrandt or dark traditional things. And the subject, I either have to be on the eye level of my subject or straight above looking down, and that's very contemporary. And then I like it simple and clean. So when you reduce my work in a photo, it looks like photorealism, and it isn't. When you see it, the live piece, the edges are soft. It's a little more sensitive than that. You did a lot of the still lives, but then I also noticed that you have some incredible people and figures. Thank you. And there's one thing that I've also noticed, and I don't know if you do this on purpose, but it seems like there's almost always some kind of sense of motion. I mean, like for example, mm -hmm. you got this one with the rain, okay, and you know the kids looking down and everything, <laughs> but still you can kind of just feel the rain dripping down, you know, and then you've got this cute little girl, this little redhead just, you know, joyfully running through a field, you know, and you know, this, you can just kind of feel the sun basking, okay? Mm -hmm. What's the idea when you do figures? Figures are my favorite thing to paint. Uh, they don't sell as well as, say, still life or landscape, but they're my favorite thing. I am a people person, but I don't like formal portraits. Oh. I like to indicate the personality of the subject a little more in what they wear, in how they move, in the mood and the feeling behind the painting. So she's got drips, you know, it's really arty. She has blue nail polish and it's a little edgy. This girl is running freely and the spots are flying off her dress and she's a dreamer, <laughs> you know? So thank yeah. you for the compliment. People are my favorite things to Now, now I notice red hair and uh -huh. you've got a little red hair. J total guess. <laughs> Could this kid somehow be related to you? Yes. Okay. She is my granddaughter. Ah. And so is this strawberry redhead. Ah, fun. Mm -hmm. yeah, I got to tell you, you know, I mean, and my kids get tired of hearing this, but if you could just skip being a parent <laughs> and go straight to grandparent, it's so much more fun. Oh, and easier. Yeah. Oh, phew, yeah. So you can get them all juiced up and see a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> I like to ask this as the last question for everybody. So. Okay, got to get official, okay? Yeah. Susie, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna go back to the renowned artist, Susan <laughs> and Jarvis. How do you want to leave your mark? I want my work to be remembered because it lifted people. I paint what makes me feel happy, light, expressive, and when I'm long gone, if my work continues to do that, that will be a pleasant memory. And also, painting for me is a vehicle so people can feel good about themselves. And it, it forces you to like who you are because you're gonna get really bad comments and really wonderful comments. So I want to be remembered as giving that gift to other artists and to just have my work lift people you see me every Sunday in the ABC4 News at 10 p.m. with a positive news feature called Utah Success Stories. A lot of my news stories are a combination of dirty jobs and how it's made. If you're a business owner with an interesting story to tell, put me to work. Now these stories aren't for everybody. It's gotta be a good fit for both sides. Full disclosure, we do charge a fee to cover production costs and social media exposure. For more information, email me at doug at dougjessup.com. Utah Success Stories. One of the last questions I usually ask everybody is, how do you want to leave your mark? Well, artists, they definitely leave marks. Objects with stories are treasures remembered.
I am with Dr. Micah Christensen at Anthony's Fine Art today. So Micah, number one, thanks for letting us come on today. Now, I have to admit, I went to college at Utah State University and the <laughs> valley is called Cache Valley. That's right. You know, where they had the cache of trappers and everything. That's right. And this kind of looks reminiscent. This is set in the Cache Valley. The man on the horseback is Captain Bonneville, ah. who helped establish the fur trading that happened up in Cache Valley in the mid 19th century. Now there's a lot of things named Bonneville in Utah. That's right. And I'm guessing a lot of people don't know why. This is the Corpus Delecti, the actual person named Bonneville. He was born in France as a young graduating officer from the US Military Academy. The most attractive things to do with your time are to explore. Sure. And he was sent back west as part of a military expedition and a peaceful military expedition and as part of a commercial effort by John Jacob Astor ah. to uh, explore and map the Oregon Trail. In fact, the Mormon pioneers were dependent on the maps created by Captain Bonneville to make their way from the East Coast to the West. Who is the person that made this beauty? Minerva Tykert has become a household name regionally, but uh, I think she's on the precipice of becoming a, a nationally known figure. She was born in Ogden, Utah, but she trained at the Art Institute of Chicago and then the Art Students League of New York. She is one of the most highly trained and accomplished artists of her generation and was recognized by people like Robert Henry, who is her professor in New York, as being one of his greatest talents. But unlike many artists who stayed in New York on either coast, he told her to go paint the story of her people. Ah. And being from the Inner Mountain West, she comes back to Utah, Wyoming, Idaho. She ends up settling in Cokeville, Wyoming, and she looks for books and materials on the history of the local area and finds a book on Captain Bonneville and begins making these monumental canvases. This is one of two that she did depicting Captain Bonneville. Artists create beautiful images. Well, one of my favorite images is what I like to call God's paintbrush. I love to get out in nature. Clear nasal spray helps me breathe. I'm pretty sure they'll help you too. So come on, join me. You know you want to. Take a deep breath and relax. Thanks for watching this episode of Jessup's Journal. It's my honor to share powerful, positive, and inspirational stories and music right here on TV every week and worldwide at jessupsjournal.com. Everyone has a story, even you. Stories have power. They help us understand each other. With another entry into Jessup's Journal, I'm Doug Jessup. Left to right, go slow. Left to right, go slow.